Most medicines in the world are first developed and tested in American Caucasians. The problem with this is that medicines that work in one population may not necessarily work in another population. So in 2000, there was hope and excitement when the U.S. president at that time, Bill Clinton, declared a victory for humanity and genetics by saying, today we celebrate the revelation of the first draft of the human book of life. But the reality is, there is no single human book of life. There is no single human genome. So here we are, 14 years later, still missing genetic data from all parts of the world. 71% of the genetic data available right now are from Americans and Europeans. Now, that means 30% of all the available genetic data are from 80% of the world's population. And only 10% of all the available genetic data are from Africans. Yet Africa is the origin of all human beings. Now, that means the origin of each of your genes can be traced back to your ancestors in Africa. So to understand the genetics of all human populations, we must start from Africa, because Africa has also the greatest genetic diversity. Here's another reason why we must start from Africa. Right now, 75, 71% of HIV-positive patients live in sub-Saharan Africa. But when we develop medicines for AIDS or any disease, we first test them in American Caucasians. The problem with that is that medicine that is safe for the U.S. may not be necessarily safe for Africans. And a dose that is right for me here, a Kenyan, may not necessarily be right for my friend over there from Nigeria. Let me give you a real example. Efavirenz is a drug for the treatment of AIDS. 50% of Ugandans contain a genetic mutation that is associated with increased risk of headaches and dizziness to this drug. Now, this drug was first tested in Caucasian Americans, where side effects were lower. If we had genetic data from Ugandans, we would have predicted higher side effects and designed a more appropriate dose. So I came up with a solution. The solution is to create a comprehensive genetic database of all African populations and an online educational platform to train students on how to use that data. Now, I'm launching that project today. It's called the United Genomes Project and is based at the Dartmouth Medical School. Here is a summary of how it's going to work. We are going to ask Africans living in the U.S. <coughs> to participate in a study in which we'll collect a million genetic data points for each person. Then the resulting data will be used to train students all over Africa on how to identify effective and safe medicines. And the data are also going to be open on the web, so anyone from Nigeria to Namibia can learn and make discoveries from them. Like I did in 2002, when I made a potentially new discovery on HIV drug resistance. At that time, I was just a science student at Egerton University in a rural part of Kenya. All I had was a radical idea on HIV and no lab. And for a dollar per hour, I went to cyber cafes and analyzed free human DNA sequences on the web. Now, all over Africa, there are thousands of students just like me who can do this. And the number of these students who are brilliant but lack an opportunity is increasing as the internet becomes more accessible. Now, imagine the discoveries that will come. 
when these students begin analyzing the data on our platform. So participating in this project will open a new future of medicine pioneered in Africa, a future in which medicine is more effective and safe because it is personalized, one in which Africans own their data and charter their destiny and sit on the table as equal partners when drugs are being developed or even develop their own drugs. This has never been done before. I invite you to join in this mission. Thank you. So I just, I just wanted to underline a couple of things. One is that this is a world premiere today. No one's ever heard about this. This is brand new. You can go to unitedgenomes.org and learn more about it. That's right? Uh, yes. Yeah, OK. And then just, I just want to, as I recall, just taking the, it's called efferens. Is that the drug? Efferens. Efferens, right. So for Ugandans, 50% of the people were getting nauseous or vomiting. And so, of course, they didn't want to take their medicine. And if they didn't take their medicine, then they get HIV resistant uh, or resistant HIV. And then they can get AIDS and then they are more likely to die, right? That's what happens. Uh, yes. So it becomes uh, bad for everyone as well. Right. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.